As Port Board Chairman Dan Tidenko made clear Monday, the current probe is unrelated to and separate from a review of allegations of nepotism that began last May at the port. Uh, civil service has just recently come back to us saying that um, there were serious mistakes made on the part of uh, the Port Authority Human Resources Division. Um, you have to correct those. So does this grow out of that nepotism investigation? No. I just, that's, that's why I underscored. This is separate and apart. This new probe was begun in October, said Tidenko, and neither he nor the governor's office have revealed specifically what the focus of it is. Tidenko would only describe it in general terms. There are internal flaws and processes, um, uh, internal processes and procedures that are flawed or not in place that should be in place um, and potential manipulation of those to try and uh, indicate that they were in place or should have been in place. But what Tidenko on Monday characterized as internal flaws and possible manipulation of those flaws was characterized last Thursday by Governor Spokesman Phil Leon Guerrero as serious allegations and evidence of impropriety and corruption. The only thing I can confirm is that allegations of uh, impropriety and corruption have been levied against several employees at the port, and as a result of this investigation and the allegations levied against them, they've been served with proposed notices of adverse action. And it was that characterization that caught the attention of Attorney General Rapatas, who instructed his deputy, Phil Tidenko, to write to Port Board Chairman Dan Tidenko and Acting Port GM Joanne Brown. In his letter, the Deputy AG writes that if the investigation conducted by the port involves violations of criminal law, we urge the port to contact the Guam Police Department and our prosecution division as soon as possible to make a complaint or have the matter investigated further. Well, we certainly did receive the uh, request from the Attorney General's office. Uh, currently, the Port Authority administratively is addressing those issues, and that will be wrapped up in the near future. Once we do that, certainly we'll turn over all information that we have to the Attorney General's office for them to evaluate and determine whatever they choose to. I think what we need to do is we need to allow due process. We need the employees, you know, due process. So, you know, first there's going to be an internal investigation. That is what Joanne Brown is doing right now. Uh, uh, it has to happen within 10 days, so it's going to happen this week, and we should have answers this week and be able to address them by Monday or Tuesday. Because the AG's letter was written by his brother, Phil, Port Board Chairman Dan Tidenko referred comment on the AG's letter to Port Board Member Mike Benito, who emphasized that the Port Board will collectively decide whether or not this ongoing probe warrants referral to the Attorney General based on the review of acting GM Joanne Brown. So I'd like to see how that goes through, and then we'll make that determination um, after we've seen the report. But you expect to fully cooperate? Absolutely. You know, anything that we, you know, if there is anything, we're definitely going to fully cooperate with any request by the AG. But again, we need to do the internal investigation, and, uh, and we're going to allow Joanne Brown to do that. Administratively, certainly the port is well within its jurisdiction to address administrative operations of the authority, and that is exactly what we're in the process of doing right now. Were the comments from Phil Leon Guerrero at the governor's office last week perhaps premature? Well, I think it's, you know, too early to tell that. You know, I think what we'll do is we'll wait till next week and we'll see how that report comes by and then uh, we'll, take it, we'll take the proper course at that time.